have you ever been in a situation where you know that you should be showing someone honor, yet they are showing you honor? It kind of makes you feel uncomfortable, doesn't it? It's like if you're a man, or I'm go Arm and I are going into the store, and she opens the door for me. You know, it's kind of, that's unusual. I kind of feel awkward. But today's passage, I want us to remember that Jesus comes to John the Baptist and he asked him to baptize him. Boy, can you imagine how John was taken back by that request? But I was preparing for this sermon today. I read this wonderful message from a man by the name of Matthew McCraw. He lives in Bartow, Florida, and he had the most wonderful insight into this beautiful passage that Miss Irma is going to read to us in just a few, a few moments. Let's look at that passage together and see what God is teaching us this morning. Matthew 3, 13 through 17. Then Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan to be baptized by John. But John tried to deter him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? The Jesus, Jesus replied, let it be so. Now it is proper for us to do this, to fulfill all righteousness. Then John consented. As soon as Jesus was baptized, he went out, out of the water. In that moment, heaven was opened, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and a lightning on him. And the voice from the heaven said, this is my son, whom I love. With him I am well pleased. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You know, we are fast forwarding this morning from the day of Epiphany, when they think that probably Jesus was about two, to being the day that he starts his ministry. So we're looking at a whole bunch of years that we don't have a lot of insight into Jesus' life other than we know that when he was 12, that he was at the temple and he was amazing the priest with his knowledge. You know, over the past four weeks, we have learned about the birth of that promised Messiah and how he fulfills the promises and the prophecies of the Old Testament. Three weeks ago, we were introduced to John the Baptist. John was pointing us to Jesus as one who was accelerating the coming of the kingdom of God. Now we see an interaction for the first time between John and Jesus as Jesus comes to him to be baptized. As we look at this passage, I want us to see three pictures of Jesus, if you will, this morning. I want us to see a picture of Jesus' faithfulness. We see that Jesus came from Galilee to, do, to John to be baptized. Why would he do this? You know, why would he want even to be baptized? My friends, this was certainly surprising to John the Baptist. We'll talk about that more in just a few minutes, but Jesus tells us in this passage that this was to fulfill all righteousness. So Jesus indicates in some manner that he is supposed to be baptized by John in order to fulfill his mission that has been given to him by his Father. Even though he was the Messiah, even though he was the Son of God, even though he was accelerating the kingdom of God, even though he should be baptizing John, instead, even though his baptism that his baptism is more powerful than what John can baptism, he still goes to John. Yet, you see, what Jesus was doing was fulfilling and being faithful to what his Father had called him to do. He was placing himself among humankind, and he was humbling himself by being baptized as the other followers of God were doing. He was being faithful. Are we faithful to what God has called us to do as his followers? 
I think in response to, in John's response to Jesus, that we were given also a picture of Jesus' Lordship. In verse 14 and 15, bear in mind that this is John the Baptist. Okay? John the Baptist had a long history with Jesus. They were cousins, as a matter of fact. Jesus himself would later say of John the Baptist that there is no greater who has been born of a woman than John the Baptist. Yet John is floored by the thought of baptizing Jesus. I should be baptized by you, he told Jesus. John recognizes his lordship. He recognizes the lordship of our Messiah, Jesus Christ. We also must recognize that our Jesus is our Lord. John has already said, I'm not even worthy to touch his sandals. Now he adds this statement to that. Jesus says that all this has happened in order for him to fulfill his promise. This has happened to fulfill all of the righteousness. So I ask the question, what does Jesus mean by this statement? To fulfill all righteousness. I think what it means is that Jesus must do this in order to accomplish the righteous person for which he came. Let's be clear that Jesus doesn't need to be baptized in order to be made righteous. Jesus is already perfectly righteous and without any sin. He was born without sin. Remember that even those who were baptized by John did so after they had repented of their sins and they were making a public statement that they were turning away from their sin and they were committing to God's way. Jesus, he had no need to fulfill or to repent of sin. However, he did publicly want to commit himself to God's way through baptism. I believe Jesus was baptized for four reasons. I believe that Jesus wanted to identify with human beings. The people that were coming to John to be baptized after repenting of their sins, Jesus really had no reason to repent, yet I believe he wanted to identify with others, with other people of humanity, so that he could later represent them by taking the sins of humanity on himself all the way to the cross. I think that he wanted to identify his future command that he had been given. Jesus would later command his followers to go forth, make disciples and baptize them, bring them into the kingdom of God. By him having been baptized himself, he brought further emphasis on the importance of baptism. I think that Jesus wanted to identify his commitment that he had to his Father. This period in Matthew's Gospel signifies the beginning of Jesus' early ministry. Jesus is signifying his commit commitment to following the will of his Father at his baptism. And he wanted to identify with the work that he knew he was going to be doing in the future. As we have discussed before, Baptism signifies the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus. By being baptized himself, Jesus was giving an early picture of what kind of future work he was going to be doing. He would accomplish things through his death. He would accomplish things and at the time of resurrection and at the time of the cross. Jesus comes to be baptized by John. John Jesus is the one who really and truly is supreme. John wants to yield his baptism to him, to Jesus. Yet, Jesus demonstrates his lordship. His lordship further by taking the form of an obedient and humble human. In doing so, Jesus shows that he is the Messiah and that the people will truly need him, and finally, we have a picture of Jesus' deity. 
if you look at verses 16 and 17 that Miss Irma read to us, when Jesus was coming out of the water, and there was a voice from heaven that came and said, This is my son, whom I am well pleased. Oh, what a magnificent moment that must have been when the Spirit of God came down upon Jesus like a dove, and they actually heard the voice of God. Can you imagine standing on the banks of the Jordan River that day? You know, as I read this passage, I was further blessed by some of the readings that I had made my brother pray. I think that we see in this passage the entire Trinity. Jesus, the Son, He is being baptized. God the Father is speaking His approval of that baptism of Jesus. The Holy Spirit of God descended upon Jesus like a dove. And this is proof. This is proof that God is one. We see individual members. We see those three persons of the Trinity coming together and working together. God is unified. God is unified and He exists in those three persons. Some may say, how is that possible? Well, our friends, it's possible because we have to remember that this is God we're talking about. God can accomplish anything. <clears throat> Nothing is impossible for Him. We're talking about the One who designed all of life. We're talking about the One who designed the stars in the sky, who told the oceans they could only come this far to the shoreline who told the moon where to go at night, where to hide in the daytime. This is the Jesus who gave us the beautiful sunrises and sunsets that we are so privileged to witness every day. My friends, the Trinitarian relationship of our God is one of the great mysteries and the great realities of faith. God is one. And He exists as the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. All at the same time. All at the same time. We see in this passage, we see that through this experience that Jesus was more than just a mere man. As, a, as it comes, as Jesus comes up out of that water. Can you imagine that there is something like a dove that descends upon Jesus. And all of a sudden, out of that vision that we have comes the voice of his father. Notice that the Bible doesn't tell us it came as a dove, but it came like a dove. My friend, the Spirit of God, he appeared in a way that day that we can recognize. And, and he came upon Jesus anointing him anointing him further for his mission that he had been sent for on this earth as a human. In case this is not amazing enough, we can see the actual verse that was 